how's everybody doing um welcome into the stream you know sometimes i wish things would just work uh, so if you remember if you were uh here last week for the stream you know i had some major major issues well i guess the internet was crapping out and so like i couldn't stream at all um and this like i've been checking my internet all day it's been great and then like five minutes before i'm getting ready to stream i check it again and it's like it's not as bad as it was last week but it wasn't great so to like quickly do that and then i'm using obs with stream elements and like there's supposed to be a chat panel in obs but for some reason instead of showing just a chat it just loaded the youtube stream and i don't know how to fix it so i have like my stream then like the youtube stream built into it so like that's how monitoring chat Ugh. let's test something out let's see does this work and there it is yeah well that part worked is stream elements working um so anyway let me ah there we go um so today we're going to be talking about plugins and if you're interested in uh taking a look at the plugins that we're going to be talking about today and if you want links to anything uh go to that blog post and you can see the links to everything um yeah, so I find that, like, I never know. Um, there's always, like, what you don't know you don't know. And I think plugins are, especially when you're first starting out, um, you don't always know, like, what plugins are out there. Um, and even, like, as long as I've been doing this, I'm probably not aware of a bunch. So please, like, let me know what some of your favorite plugins are if they're not on that list. And I'll gladly talk about them and kind of go over them. Um, welcome in everybody who is in the chat box. Caleb R, better audio for you. Looking forward to this. Me too. Uh, glad you have upload speed, at least better than last weekend. Your audio and video are working great on YouTube. Awesome. That's what I want to hear. And if you're familiar with my, if you watch my videos, you'll notice uh, the background is a little bit different. I'm trying to kind of spruce things up, have a little fun. Uh, normally I have a gold glitter background that I've been uh, using lately. Um, but I've, I've been thinking about changing up the theme a little bit and doing like this medieval tavern type thing. Um, so like one thing I wanted to do is like have a table here. So it looks like I'm sitting at a table working, but the proportions are all off and it doesn't really look that great. Um, so I'm thinking about getting like a, a custom one made. Hey, MZ, Batman. Hey, glad it's working. Me too. I'm glad everything is working, except for the chat. I don't know what's going on with, with that, but we're not going to let it get us down. We're going to have fun talking about plugins, and thanks so much for hopping in. I was just talking about the green screen that I'm doing right now. It's not ideal because you can still see like green on the edges, um, which I think it's because like I'm too close to the actual green screen. So... Um, but I, I, I think it looks kind of cool. I might be getting, if you kind of look, it's animated. So like that fire's crackling. If you see, uh, the dude over here, his arm goes up and down. Like this guy is drinking. Um, so that was kind of fun. So I'm thinking about like changing up the theme of the channel and kind of doing this tavern and like getting a new logo and a whole bunch of stuff. But that stuff takes time and... Time is something I haven't had lately, but things are changing. So I'm hoping to create new content. Um, my next video that's gonna be that I'm gonna be working on is truncating silence, that I'm really excited about. I recorded the entire thing, and then I wasn't thrilled with the quality and like a little hiccup at the end. So hopefully, I don't know when I'll be able to record that, but that's gonna be coming soon. Andrew Maher, glad to be here. I'm glad you're here. Um, so like I said, if you want to drop some plugins, that's not on the list. And once again, um, here is the list of plugins that we're going to be talking about today. It's plugins that I've used in the past or at least are aware of. So it'll be a little bit of a demonstration, um, on some of them and some just kind of talk about them. Um, if you're not already be sure to join the Facebook group. Um, 
it's a great place to share knowledge and just have great conversations about Reaper and using it for podcasting. I've actually recently, I just started, I was talking to um, CJ Vincent, I think was his name. Um, Joe's showing the group and he was like, Hey, you need to like do Instagram. You need to start a Reddit. You need to do blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, that's all great ideas, but again, time, but I did start a subreddit for Reaper for podcasting. Um, so I'm going to be posting videos there. So we can also have a discussion there. I've thought about doing discord, but between that and like a Facebook group, I don't see the need. And plus like the effort it takes to keep a community like that going and just like keep the conversation um it's just a lot of work so if anybody if you're interested in starting a discord let me know and i can look into that more and consider it more but for now i think sticking with the facebook group and the new reddit sub channel i don't have a link to that but it's just reaper for podcasting too many social medias keep up with really exactly yeah and i think the facebook group is good and i think reddit is good for searchability um because like the facebook group isn't going to show up on google um, but Reddit will. So I think to get people aware of this community, I think Reddit will be good. Um, but Discord, I don't know. I don't see a need for it, but um, Discord is really all I use anymore. I, I'm using Discord a lot more and like I'm on Fa <laughs> I think this is a common thing. Like I'm on Facebook for the groups. Um, but like I really like Discord. Uh, Caleb, are you on in the Facebook group? Do you use Facebook at all? Are you just like completely um, swearing it off. Let me adjusting my doc. There we go. Um, and I saw a comment. Better audio for you. Use a little magenta for hair slash backlight. Magenta is opposite of green, so adding a little will take away of the green spill light. So I have two lights pointing at me. Um, talking about like having that like magenta coming on me or like magenta in the background uh i left facebook in 2015 oh wow okay so actually really cool um i i so there is the youtube uh the community tab on youtube which i thought was just for um I thought it was just for like once you hit a thousand subs, but apparently it's not. And I just um, unlock that. So I'm going, I'm planning on um, using this more, but if, if there's a lot of people that aren't on Facebook anymore, Then I'm definitely going to be posting here. Um, oh, wow. Well, I guess that's still valid. Uh, eventually, I'll be doing a live Q&A on Facebook. But uh forgot to disable that. It's been so long since I've actually done a live stream. I forgot what I'll have set up. All right. Uh, only use Facebook for groups. I wish I could just get rid of it. I know. I wish they would make an app that was like Facebook groups and you didn't see your feed. You just saw like a feed of your Facebook group. But they didn't like recommend a bunch of stupid groups. I like, you know like there is that tab right now on the website and on the app. But then it's like there's so many. It's like, hey, here's a group you might be interested in. Like, I'm not. I'm in, I'm in the group. So I'm, I'm want to be in. There is a huge disparity in quality Discord posts, really, though. I haven't had a Facebook since 2010. Um, wow. Yeah, I know, uh, Tom Kelly, if you're not aware, um, he does clean cut audio. Well, he did clean cut audio on YouTube. Um, great channel. Be sure to check it out, but he's also got a discord. That's pretty much like he's, he's done with Facebook. Um, but he's got his own discord. So maybe, okay, well, what I'm not going to say that I'm going to do discord. Don't feel like you got to do discord just because a couple of people use it though. Been really digging all your YouTube content. Well, I appreciate that. So I guess I'll make a post on in the Facebook group and on the YouTube community tab um, whether people will be interested in Discord or if like the community tab on Facebook will meet that kind of the same need. I guess you guys won't be able to create posts. Um, so something to think about, but yeah, I'll, I'll think about it more. 
Um, what is, where were we at? Light coming from behind you from the top. Okay, so like back here, aim down. Uh, the light sets you apart from your background, in this case, the green screen. Okay. I will PM you about lighting later. Awesome. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, so like Reddit is a good call, though. I think so, too. I think like you can have all it's like it's private enough so like unlike facebook where you're still like inundated with all the crap that's going on um but it's open enough that you can have conversation you can have people finding you and have good call topics there so now i just need to actually like make more of an effort to do it and creating content on youtube that that's my main goal right now is like creating more um because i have so much content that I want to like so many videos I want to create on YouTube. Um, like just to give you here's like all my videos that I've had, like the ones that I'm thinking about like doing soon and like the ones I'm planning and like there, there's so many videos that <laughs> um, I want to do. It's just like trying to make time to do them while also running a full-time podcast editing business. Um, but now I'm getting a lot more time. I'm managing my time better, moving stuff around. So I'm really hoping that, excuse me, um, I'll be able to get more YouTube content coming. Oh, I like how organized that is. Thank you. I, I don't do a great job of keeping up with it. <laughs> um, but like I get uh, a lot of, so I, Originally, back in 2019, I think it was, maybe even 2018 is when I first had this idea, but I started getting more serious about creating a Reaper course. And so, like, I had, like, all my lessons planned out, but then, like, the idea of creating, like, 60 videos was just so overwhelming. Um, and it's like, I put it off for a while, and then finally, I'm just like, you know what? It doesn't feel right to me to, like, have this course that... It's just way too much effort and like charging for something like this. Like it just felt weird to me. And like, so YouTube just felt a lot more um, in alignment. It's kind of like how I was feeling. And so a lot of this was just like the videos that I had planned out um, for that course. I just never got around to it. But a lot of plans. Um, so, yeah, so it's kind of what's been going on with me. Um I kind of want to see some workflow ideas, maybe go through an entire podcast. You could break it up into different sections. So I, do, I have done live streams where I go through the entire process. Like my, I take the raw audio, take it into RX, clean it up, and then like edit an entire interview. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you thinking like edit it down into like a typical YouTube video? Um, cause I, I, I want to do like live stream, live edits more, but again, it's, and <laughs> as you probably were, I share an office with my wife. So like trying, and she's a content creator. Um, and so like trying to split the time up to where it makes sense is very, very challenging. Yeah. That'll work for me. I'll check those out. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, I plan on doing more in the future. Um, just when I have time. All right, so shall we get into it? So once again, if you missed it before, yeah, those have been so helpful, your live edits. Awesome, I'm glad, I'm glad. Um, I know they can be um, a lot to sit through because they're usually like two or three hours. I need to better pick uh, what episodes I work on and not do like a four person hour long interview of like my mastermind. Um, so that way, because like the actual like editing, like once you see like 10 minutes of it, the rest of the 50 minutes are really just more the same. So maybe I'll try to find like shorter episodes or actually an idea I've had, um, I was going to throw out there. If any of you have like an episode that you want me to edit, that's like 20, 30 minutes that I can edit um, live. If that's something you'd be interested, let me know. I have mostly been interested in doing fiction podcasts, so it kind of runs the entire gamut of all parts of production. Fiction, yeah. <sighs> that's something that's just like, it seems so much, like with sound design and like 
all the foley and just everything but like i think it'd be like so much fun to do but very time consuming and also i've thought about opening up to the community to do like their own like live stream as well so if you want to like live stream your workflow because there is something about it's kind of like what i was saying earlier like you don't know what you don't know so seeing somebody else edit a podcast um you can pick up little things that they're doing but like there's not really not many people are doing it like i can't really think of anybody that's doing it regularly um so like if anybody like watching like if you want to like i'll set it up and you can live stream like your editing workflow i think that'd be really useful for editors everywhere um i most it might be too much for me oh to do a live stream not a, oh or or to do a fiction podcast well that's the thing like i had somebody approach me about doing an audiobook and he said it was eighty thousand words so it's like seven and a half hours i did i ran a calculator it's like seven and a half hours of recording is roughly what eighty thousand words would be and like that feels daunting and like audiobooks have like strict standards of what they have to be um but the thing is like the only way you're going to it's not going to be too much is actually doing it. So like, just fucking jump in and go balls to the wall and just get it done. And just kind of see, and maybe it's really difficult and maybe you need to find help, but um, you won't know until you start doing it. And you might find that it's more, it's easier or you have like a more of a natural ability than you realized. All right. So does anybody have a preference of like what category you want to start with? So look, I put the list in equalization, compression, leveling, D reverb, sibilance, noise reduction, limiters, metering, and some miscellaneous. So drop in the chat what you want to start with, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I was, it's such a fluster of like trying to get the stream set up that I don't have any like episodes pulled up to work on. Um, let me do that real quick while you guys let me know what you want to uh, start with. And there's a dreaded dead air. Actually, let me uh, just kind of post in the Facebook group to let people know we're here. And also, let me know um, what you got, what you all are working on. So, like, I don't have, so I have a podcast with my uh, podcast editor, Mastermind. Um, but I don't have, like, a podcast of my own. And so, like, all the editing I do is for other people. I have a podcast editing business and... Um, people hire me to edit their shows, but I'm, I'm curious of what um, you all are working on. Just fire down the list. Free is just about all I can afford at the moment. Um, all right, well, let's just get going down the list. But like, let me know what you like. Is it a hobby podcast that you're working on? Do you edit for other people? Um, let me know what you got working on, and we'll go ahead and get started. I probably yeah. So equalization. Um, Oh, and now I'm like way too big. What if I... I'm not trying to add to your list. <laughs> um... There we go. Now it looks, makes a little more sense. Um... Any thoughts about on ozone elements would be cool in terms of what it's useful for i just got it for free yeah i have the free uh i've had it um and i'm not super familiar with it i can kind of go in and talk about a little bit about what it can do um, i'm always challenged with the issues of reducing noise while making it sound natural mixing some dry back into a gate or limiter seems the best so far suggestions i just do i have um all right so let's yeah we can get into it so let's start with noise suppression or noise reduction so let me find some let 
raw audio. Of mine because I usually have quite a bit of noise. Um, yeah, so I I typically and it's one of those things like maybe I'm not doing it right, but I typically just kind of do a couple of noise suppression plugins. Or is this already processed? So there's nothing there. Wow, how prepared am I? Okay, so let's grab, oh, those are all cleaned up already. Um, okay, here we go. This should be a good one. All right, so here we have, um, you can see there's a little bit of noise down here. So the main one I use, I typically I'll bring it into a freestanding RX um, and like do all my cleanup there, but you can also use it as a plugin. So if we're gonna go under isotope, um, voice, no, oh, there we go. I'm like, I know I have RX9. So highlighting a section of audio and then turning on the repeat. So that way it just keeps going. Um, you learn it. And then click off again. And now this is how much I And I typically drop it down to like a five. And you see that get rid of quite a bit of it. And through um, that compression and like just boosting the levels later on, it's going to bring some back. Um, and so typically like later down the line, um, another one that I like is the NS1 from Waves. And so this one doesn't have like a learn feature. Um, you just have some preset or you kind of set it yourself. So I just do voice podcast and it starts off at 30%. I usually drop it down quite a bit to like 15 or 20 and just like give me a little bit extra. Um, but I find like that uh, is enough for me. Like I don't, I think it sounds fine. Um, but definitely, I don't remember if you said better audio for you. Are you in, I only use Facebook group. So if you're in the Facebook group, throw it in there. Um, And see what the community has to say. Because I find like I get like I'm fine with um, what like voice noise or the NS1 gets me. Um, so those are the two premium. The free, obviously, there's a built in with Reaper. It's called Reefer or Reefer. And so similar to what you do with RX. Um, so change the mode to subtract, automatically build a profile, but highlight a selection of audio, turn on the toggle and just let it run and it'll build that noise profile. And then once you're done, uncheck this and hit play a couple times. Cause it's like an older version. So I haven't, I don't use this anymore. Um, I find that like, even when it started playing again, it was still like build a profile. So like hit, hit play a couple times, just to make sure it's turned off. And then now you'll see is taking out all that noise. And one thing with uh, Refear is it can degrade too much. Um, and that's one reason that I stopped using it and went started using RX exclusively. Um, but if you click and drag, so you can actually adjust what you're doing. Um, I think, was it shift? Nope. Control. Yeah. If you hold control, you can uh, click and drag and reduce how much it's actually um, removing. So it'll be uh, less impactful because it's always better to do multiple stages of softer, whatever compression, 
noise reduction than like doing it once really hard. Um, so that's one way you can do that. So you see there's a little bit left in there and then throw on like another compressor or another suppression, that kind of thing. And then the other free one that I haven't used, I'm just aware of is the Burntum, Burntum denoiser. Um, and so this one is just kind of, it doesn't have a learning, but you just turn up like how much you want it to reduce. Um, and then you can adjust like the frequency, how much it's reducing at different frequencies. Um, they have a great how to video, um, or they have a great guide. So whenever on the, uh, user guide, it'll tell you how to use it. I haven't used it too much. Um, but if you're looking for, or I haven't used it at all. Um, so I can't really like tell you exactly how to do it, but there is a really good video on how to do it. Um, uh, so if you're looking for a free noise, uh, noise reduction plugin, this one is definitely an option. All right, so going back up to EQ. Um, so of course, always got to mention Isotopes RX. Actually, never mind. Um, <laughs> I forgot they don't have an EQ plugin. So if you use the standalone, you can do EQing in there, uh, but not in not as a plugin. Uh, Fab Filter Pro Q3 is one I don't have, but I'm very interested in, um, mainly because the price it's $180, so it's a little uh, uh, outside how much I'm willing to spend on a plugin right now. But it comes highly, highly uh, regarded in the community, and Tom Kelly swears by it. Um, so if you've got the budget and you want a really good EQ, that's something to check out. Uh, the other one is Shep's Omni Channel. Um, so this one is a channel strip. Um, so it has a bunch of different options. So you can, it's kind of an all in one. Um, I'll go through it here. Pre, so like saturation, um, but it's one that's going to be in several categories. So it has a gate, a no, uh, yeah, gate. It's got a de-esser. Um, and this one to kind of set your frequencies and you can adjust your threshold here. Now let me, now I know you can't hear, um, so let me turn that off so I don't get distracted by it. Um, but you can adjust the threshold until you start seeing it actually removing something. And then you can monitor it here. Um, let me pull up. A piece of audio that I've got permission to share. Give me one second. Um, All right, so this is me. Mix this down, just normalize it so we can hear it. This episode, this episode is also for any woman, which is why I am going to talk about taking center. Stage. So, this episode actually was inspired if you can hear, like it's. I'm hearing, I'm actually hearing her speaking and that's not what you want to sing. Just reduce that. Holy shit. It is a freaking brilliant performance and I absolutely hmm. recommend that you go and search. Okay, I don't know how to use this as well as I thought I did. Um, Which is yeah, so you just a threshold here I... and you have two, so you can do like that 4,500 or 2,500 or whatnot. Um, EQing, so you have high, mid, low, and then the tone. And then compressor. And what's cool about this one is you can change um, 
what type of compressor it emulates. So you have VCA, FET, or optical. Um, I'm not going to go into what all those are because I don't really understand it. Um, but Tom Kelly on his Clean Cut Audio podcast did like an entire episode on compression. Um, and he goes into it. So check that out if you're interested. And then so it does have this actually meter. Was inspired by... um, so you can display what goes in, the gain reduction, and what goes out. So like really helpful when you're doing compression because you can see how much it's reducing it. So like obviously this is compressing it way too much. So you kind of go down. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then um, so you have that. It's got a simple limiter. And then you can adjust your output here. So Chef's Omnichannel is a really good, versatile plugin. So if you're on a budget, um, it's a great way to get several of these. And that's what's great about Waves um, is they're, so their plugins are listed like $400, but they're always on sale for like $20, 30 $40. Um, and they're always doing like these promos where you can like buy one and get a free plugin and whatnot. So keep an eye on a Waves and you can get some really good plugins for not a ton of money. Um, <clears throat> so now let's get into the free ones. So the first one is going to be the built-in one for Reaper. Re-EQ. Pretty standard um, for whatever, four level. Uh, four bands, that's it. Four band, gestures of frequency, click and drag. Um, kind of your typical, typical versatile EQ gets the job done. Um, the one that I'll typically use in Reaper is TDR Nova. So they have a free version. Um, and then they have the GE, which is, uh, I think, like 60 bucks. Um so the free version has is a four band with a high and low pass. Um, kind of your typical basic. What's really good about this one is this dynamic. So you can turn on the threshold. And so let's say you wanted to put like a, a little de-essing. Um, at like 4,500 hertz. You can turn on threshold and adjust that. So that way it only kicks in once um, that that specific frequency range hits a certain point. So that's really cool. And the premium version, um, it's got a lot of cool features. So it has six bands, um, but you can also see your output. So you can see how what you're doing affects the frequencies and this is something that i like about that i've seen from fab filter um which is really cool and then they also have a ton of presets um they also have smart operations so you can actually learn um like analyze a little bit of audio and then like through reference you can actually like it'll help match it so you have like um if they record it at two different times, you can use, I haven't used this a whole lot, so I don't even know, I can't show you how to do it, um, but you can use it as a reference and it'll match the EQ. So that way it sounds, um, you can try to make like both point, both pieces of audio sound the same. Um, and also has, oh. uh, you can do de-resonate, um, static or dynamic, um, which is really cool. And the last one is M Equalizer from Melda Production. Um, so this one's free. They have like a suite of a bunch of free plugins that you can pay for if you want to get rid of this. And they have a ton of paid ones. Um, but if you're looking for a good free EQ, this is another great option. All right. Do you use EQ and Sheps? Is it dynamic? Uh, no, it is not dynamic. It's just kind of um, 
I don't know the word for it. But it's not, you can't like fine tune it based on the frequency. It's just, um, you have like your highs, mids, low, and tone. Um, so I, I do a little bit if I, um, if I just want to like increase the highs or whatever, if I, if I just want to like kind of do a broader, um, adjustment, um, I don't, I don't really use a whole lot anymore. I usually pretty much if I'm doing EQ in Reaper, I'm using Nova. Um, is Nova EQ better than Chef's U? It's all preference. Like it's hard to say like, cause Waves is a great company. They make really good plugins. Um, but I just like the control I have with Nova. Um, I like being able to see, you know, the output of the frequency range. Um, I like being able to like adjust a more specific kind of whatever. Um, like actually like putting it at, you know, 2500 Hertz, putting it at 12 K, whatever. Um, so I like I like the control I have over it, but Chefs is great. If it's all about like what the situation calls for. All right, so that is it for the EQ plugins, uh, compression. Let's go ahead and start with the free ones. So the first one is going to be the built-in one with Reaper, and it's the one I use for years. Um, it's kind of a basic run of the mill um, pre compression or pre comp. I think this it's like a look ahead so we can kind of see um, adjust a little ahead of time, which is kind of nice. So your attacker release, um, the ratio, all kind of like a basic compression. Um, again, check out Tom Kelly. He's got a um, really good video on compression. So if you want to learn more about what compression is, um, definitely check him out. Um, but you can set your ratio. So typically I'll do between like three and five. And then you just adjust your threshold down. Um, so what I do, I do multiple stages of compression. So I'll find like in the audio with the loudest points, turn on my toggle um, and just let it cycle through. And basically, so this is dropping down to like, below or above six and i don't want that that's too much compression for a single pass and so i'll adjust it um to where it falls in like that three to five db reduction so that one's not hitting it at all and this is really nice because you can see like where the audio is and so you kind of know where to put the um the threshold um and then you can adjust your wet and dry so Wet is pre and then dry is post. So like um, I'll typically do a little bit. I typically won't do auto makeup. I'll adjust that myself, but you can adjust the dry to increase the output into the chain. Uh, the next free one is Kotelnikov from Tokyo Don Labs. Again, has all like what you expect from a compressor, threshold, knee, ratio, blah, blah, blah. Um, that there is a premium version of this, um, that has like a lot of cool features that I don't really use, but, uh, they do have a really good video on it. So check that out if you're interested. Um, but again, set your ratio between three and five, set your threshold. Um, and then this, here's how much the gain reduction is. So that's a pretty good level and then kind of output your gain and then you can adjust the, um, attack and release like you would with any other compressor. So this is the one I'll typically use. So my the, my main go-to is um, Waze 2500 or API 2500. Um, but you can't go to a zero threshold on that. So if the audio is loud, I'll typically start with the Kotelnikov on my initial stage and then bring 2500 uh, later on. And so the last one is from Melda and Compressor. I've never used this one, but um, all the features that you'd expect from 
a plugin or uh, from a compressor. So again, if you want a good suite of plugins, Melda Productions is where it's at. Um, on the premium, my go-to is API 2500. Set your threshold, your attack, release, um, the ratio. So this one gives you less controls. Like on Kotelnikov, you can adjust it to the 10th, um, whereas API is much more limited. Um, but then turn on manual makeup, you can adjust this. <coughs> um, and you can adjust like what the meters read out. So because this is based off like an actual physical piece of hardware. Um, so that's why you has less control, but this is one. And now for any particular reason, like I can get the same result out of 2,500 as I can from Kotelnikov or Sheps. Um, but this is just like the one that I've been using for years. So it's just kind of like second nature to me. Um, and then of course, Sheps Omni Channel has the compressor strip. So you can set your threshold here, setting your ratio, attack, release, output, what have you. Um, and then Kotelnikov GE, if you want the premium version of the Kotelnikov. So next we're moving on to, let's skip and go to D Reverb. I haven't found a free D Reverb plugin. So if you know of one, please let me know. Um, I think that would be really useful. So the two that I have, the premium ones, Isotope. Um, this is my go-to. This is the only one I really use. It's really it's the only one I do use um, to use it. Uh, so Don Barnes, he's like the RX guru, or like he's like the go-to guy for RX. So he's got a Facebook group. I know a lot of people here aren't on Facebook, but. Um, there is a Facebook group for RX, so check that out if you want to. Um, but he recommends uh, having a bit of silence at the beginning and end because he finds that D Reverb works best. So find a bit of silence, hit play, turn on the learning, and just like let it get a good sample. And then once you have, turn off learn. And then I'm actually going to. I tell my brain. Listen yes, to it. I can. Um, and here's so the thing. Ten I'm going to remind my brain of that. Is like way too much reduction for me because we have to be careful D reverb because you can easily degrade your audio. So the highest I'll go is five and that's on like really reverby audio. But typically I'm like down at a three. This? That I can. Um, so cool thing you can do with here. I find that D reverb introduces a lot of sibilance. Um, and uh what's his name i'm drawing a blank podcast engineering school chris curran i was a guest on his show on um, podcast engineering school podcast um brought this up and he says that enhanced dry signal this um can really help with that so if you're finding that introducing a lot of sibilance enhanced dry this, signal that can i fix can that as my and you can output the reverb of what so Outputting reverb only is outputting, so you can hear what the plugin is going to be taking out. And so you can, um, so with any like outputting what's being taken out, you can listen and make sure you're not hearing uh, any of the voice that you want to keep in. And also you can actually like output this. Um, so if you're doing a fiction podcast and you need like a really weird demonic sound, doing re like outputting somebody's reverb is, a uh, is kind of a fun way to do that. And then the other one is Lisp. This, that I, um, this, pretty basic kind of a I one can. knob as much as freaking possible and as often as I fucking need to. And we did add it. Or that something is impossible. And you can listen to what's being reduced. Yeah, so pretty simple one. Um, there you go. I don't remember how much it is. Let me check that real quick. Where are you? 
Bieber. Oh, what am I doing? No, Lisp is uh, sibilance. I want the SPLD Reverb plugin from Plugin Alliance. Pardon me. So, um, again, it's kind of a one knob. Or that something is impossible, like allowing a craving, or watching TV in the evenings without a snack, or experiencing emotions like stress, overwhelm, boredom without snacking. So you can adjust how much uh, it's being reduced, and then you can adjust the output if you wanted to, the dry and wet, throw on a limiter. Um, so there you go. So this one, I think, is pretty affordable. So like if you need, because I think like D reverb is a must have, um, and I know RX is super expensive. Uh, so this one's fifty bucks. So I think <clears throat> for personally, like I I hate reverb. Um, so having like a, a D reverb um, is very useful. Um, I saw a comment and now my mind blanked. <laughs> so having a D reverb, especially if you're editing for others. So if you're, if you're, you have your own show, you have more control over your recording environment. So if you can put up sound, um, sound panels, do more to treat your space. That's definitely the way to go. But if you're editing for others or like for me, like I can, there's not a whole lot I can do. Um, having a D reverb plugin is super useful for that. Uh, I haven't found a free one either. I use RX as well. Yeah, I mean, RX is such an amazing soft piece of, a suite of software. Uh, Chefs versus TDR compressor thoughts. Um, pick your poison. Um, I Personally, I like uh, Kotelnikov, um, the TDR compressor, um, but personal preference. I know for there's a, a several month period where I was using Sheps um, in my chain and just stopped doing it for no real reason. So sometimes I'll use it just if I want to have different compressors. Sometimes I'll use a couple stages of 2500. It's just, um, I don't know enough about compression, like how they work to say like one is definitively better than the other. I think for podcasts, that doesn't matter as much as it does like in music production. Um, so I think either way, um, if you're on a budget, you know, you can't be a free compressor. So do you use upward compression in your projects? I do on certain ones. And, um, in the leveling section, I'll, I'll showcase those. Uh, have you noticed any major improvements in RX nine over RX eight for podcast editing? I have not, but I'm not the one to ask for it. Um, I would definitely like check out anything that Don Barnes put out or the podcast editors club. Um, there's a lot of people that have much more experience in audio engineering. Um, the, so I had RX six for the longest time and only recently upgraded to RX eight. And the only reason I have RX nine now is because it's only $50 to upgrade. Um, if you have an older version of RX, I don't see any real benefit. Um, And RX9 over... So the main... What I didn't know before... Excuse me. Uh, like RX6... Um, so RX8 over RX6 had this loudness control. Um, which is really useful if you want to get... Like automate achieving the, you know, minus 16 luffs. Um, but other than that, like I haven't... I'm, I'm sure there is. I'm sure they've improved everything. But is it enough to justify spending several hundred dollars? I'm probably going to say no if you have if you have a version of RX already. If you have RX8 R right now, uh, so I guess I would say for 50 bucks, you might as well. If you have the budget for it, then go for it. Um, all right. So I think that, what are we at? Where are we at? So we're on dereverbing. Uh, yeah, don't know a free one. So let's go into leveling. Um, so upward compression. Wait. Am I confusing myself? Mm. 
Yes, I am. I didn't put it on the list. Okay, so um, upward compression. If, if we're talking about the same thing, then upward compression. So typical compression brings down the loudest part. Upward compression brings up the quiet parts. So if that's what you're talking about, JP, um, then let's go. So my golden standard for I use like in every project um, is the vocal writer. From Waves. <clears throat> now, I know Sony mentioned like free is about all you can afford. I think if you have dynamic, yes, haha, yep. Yeah. Um, if you have dynamic speakers, so let me show you a really good example. Now, let me turn off my audio because um, I haven't asked for permission to use this. So I don't want you to listen to it, but I can show you the waveform. Um, do, 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 do. So you can see, like, there are points when she's, like, peaking. And then there are points to where, like, it's barely a whisper almost. So very, very dynamic speaker. Um, and this is when upward compression can really be useful. So um, pretty much vocal writer on everything. So what vocal writer does, if you think of compression as bringing down the loudest parts, vocal writer brings up the quiet parts. Um, Tom Kelly has like a full video on how to do vocal writer. So check out his video on clean cut audio. Uh, but the way I do it, Highlight a section of audio. Make sure your toggle is turned on. Press play. Just let it go through. And on this loudest part, you want it to barely touch the zero. So I take the range up to 12. So it goes zero to 12. Because um, you don't want to reduce anything when you're doing this. Well, I guess you can. Sometimes I do. So like here, it's like on the line. So I might do like a minus one. So the way at that loudest point, it'll reduce it a little bit. Um, but typically I'll do zero to 12. Um, and so right now you see like it's hitting the zero pretty hard. So you just adjust this a little bit louder. Still pretty hard. And so at this loudest point, it should just touch that zero. So that's a little too much. Bring it back down. A little bit more. There we go. Um, and just to kind of showcase what that does, let me find. So you see, essentially writing the volume slider um, and so you see like these louder, these quieter parts are now louder to kind of better match, um, the loudest parts. So you do this in conjunction with compressor, um, to really, and so this way it makes your compressor have to work less hard. So I'll do vocal writer first. Um, okay. I was using vocal writer wrong. So this is how I use it. I'm not necessarily saying like, this is, this isn't the only way to use it. Um, so you might not be using it wrong, maybe just different, but this is how I use it. Um, and then I'll throw a compressor on after this. Now I'm going to do a video on, uh, leveling. So I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to make sure you subscribe to Tom Kelly's Klinka audio. Cause he does like a stage compression or yeah, stage compression video. Um, and I will be doing a video on how I, uh, level audio. Um, but yeah, so I'll do this and then I'll throw on like uh, a compressor um, and just through several stages really treat because you don't want to like hit it hard because that really distorts audio. Um, I know I know I use it for other things, but I like the approach. Yeah, it's super easy. Um, yeah, so multiple stages. So I'll do vocal rider, couple compressors and then a limiter to achieve um, 
good dynamic range as well as loudness. So the other one is called max volume. So this, I don't remember what they call it. Oh, so it's high level and low level compression. So the low level is the upward compression. Do you put a second comp right after the first one? Yeah. Well, it, it depends. Um, so I'll do, I almost, so typically I'll have like noise suppression first. because I want to reduce as much noise as I can safely can before I start boosting it. Um, cause you don't want to boost that the garbage. So I'll do a noise compressor, maybe like a sibilance, um, and then vocal writer. And then depending on what it sounds like, you know, I might do a little EQ after that, um, because the, the volume can affect frequencies. Um, and so you might find that adding compression makes sibilance pretty bad. So you might need a de -esser. Um, but typically, yeah, I'll do like vocal writer. So if like it's pristine audio, it'll be vocal writer, compressor, limiter. Um, so I hope that makes sense, Batman. So, uh, I'll have to play with max volume again. It took me a while. I'm not, I don't use it very often, but like on a, a show like this, actually, let me use it properly because it's mono. So I don't want to do it on stereo. So like with her, she's so dynamic. It's really useful. Um, thing is when I do upper compression I have the problem of boosting breath too much I try deep breath by rx but sometimes it messes up some words I wonder how you do that uh, I stopped caring <laughs> I was not having much luck with it okay so let me I'll demonstrate max volume and then JP I'll come back to dealing with breaths um, so with upward compression you adjust this and you see here it's boosting the quieter parts and then the high level is your typical compression where it um, reduces the loudest parts. And then here has a built-in leveler. Um, so this is kind of like a one-stop shop if you want it to be. So I'll just do I'll just do low level compression and show you what that looks like. So if I render to mono stem. Custom action for breaks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you see the quieter parts are a little bit louder. Um, and then if we throw on the upper compression or high level compression, excuse me. Um, you can see it's a little bit more leveled and you just kind of play around with it. And then you can turn on this leveler which acts kind of like, um, if you know, ERA has like their voice leveler plugin. Um, I don't, so I can't really talk about it too much. So you can see how much you can do with this and um, you gotta be careful with it because you can easily like over compress it. But, um, typically like on a dynamic voice like this, I'll put that like early in the chain and then come back with a compressor and limiter and whatnot to kind of get a little more, um, level. Sorry for interrupting you. No, I, I want this to be a discussion. So definitely like chime in. If you have, if I'm doing something wrong, let me know because I don't have any formal education. A lot of this is self-taught or videos. So like, I'm sure there's something that like an audio engineer is just cringing right now if they're watching this. Um, stop caring. Yeah. So I used to be really, really anal about breaths. Um, but just like, as I do this more and more, I realize like, it's really not that big of a deal. If you listen to like an NPR podcast, you're going to hear breaths. Um, and now that like I'm talking about this, you're probably going to hear it all the time when you're watching movies, when you're watching TV. Wow, I'm like really cut off. Um, like people breathe. Um, one, of, one of the members of my mastermind, Carrie Caulfield Eric, did a talk, I think, at um, where was it? Like podcast movement or something like everybody breathes. Uh, so like don't worry too much if you hear breath. Because that's natural. And and as a listener, you want to hear people breathe. If there was like a point where 
you're expecting a breath and there's not, then that can be more jarring than if there is a lot of breath. But I will say you can, um, like if it does turn into a gasp, then that can be an issue. Breaths make it sound more natural, but just reduce the super loud ones. Exactly. And so I have a custom action. Um, so let me get rid of all this. So let's say this is a breath. I can highlight this section, hit my key. And that's a really tough color to see. So let me adjust that. So you can see um, it's reduced it 5 dB. So like this one section um, down 5 dB. And I do have a video on this. Well, actually, I did it for the Reaper blog. So another channel I'm going to promote the hell out of, uh, the Reaper blog. Um, I did a video um, collab with him of like my six custom Reaper actions that are essential. Um, and this is one of them. So if there is a really loud breath, highlight, hit a key uh, to reduce it. I'm actually turning this into a script. I've turned a couple of my custom actions into scripts because they can do a lot more. Um, so I'm not, if you guys want to let me know, I can send you a link to it. Um, but this is my breath reduction. Unselect all items because that can really mess with you. Split at time selection. So it'll make a split at the beginning and end of the time selection. Five instances of reducing the volume. Um, you might need to do more. I used to do 10, but I found like I just couldn't hear the breath then. Um, then it reduces to five, but now it might not reduce it enough. So um, you might need to add more of these because if you're doing compression and everything, it's going to boost it right back up. Um, and then go to play cursor. So what that does, like, let's say that you're playing it. It's like, oh, here's a breath that needs to be reduced. I can. And then it catches up to the audio. So then it starts following again. So that way you don't actually have to pause it to fix the breath. Unclear, unselect all items, um, and then remove time selection. So that way this goes away. And like if you have like highlighted section, that goes away. So this is my custom action for breath reduction. Yes, please. Okay, let me, um, I've only got three so far. So the three I've converted into scripts are my Adobe style edits. Um, remove content to beginning of item, move content to end of item, and then remove selected item, ignoring ripple. So those are the three that I've converted right now. They make them, a, I've simplified these a little bit and this one I can, oh, so what's cool about this one. So my, um, the one it's based off of is like my two track split or two track cut. And so this one turns off ripple, deletes the item and turns it on all tracks. So what's cool about using a script is now, so like let's see how Ripple is off. My old way of doing it would automatically turn it on every time. There's no way around that. But my new way of doing it, remember as your setting and it'll keep it that way. So let me grab that real quick. And um, you have to have Repack so you can install this through Repack. So there you go. Go to that link. There's instructions there with the um, link you need. Whoops. The link you need in order to add it to your repack. Um, and there you go. So you get those three custom scripts, custom actions. Sure thing. And if you have like other ideas, so I'm going to be turning a lot of mine into scripts just so I can, because there's no, no real way, an easy way to share custom actions within the community, um, but it's super easy to share a script. Um, yeah, so I'll be converting all my custom actions into scripts so I can share it with the community. If you have ideas, then feel free to let me know. All right, so that is upward compression. Does that all make sense? Oh, no problem. Um, and definitely give me feedback on what you think of them. So I'm very new to, so I know I, I've done coding in the past, but I'm new to like scripting for Reaper. So um, totally open to feedback. Um, so yeah, so is that is upper compression makes sense. Those two plugins, um, uh, vocal writer is like a must have for me. Um, it's definitely worth the money and I like, keep an eye on ways. Um, cause a lot of times like you can buy one plug and get one free. 
Oh, leveling. What am I thinking? Okay, anyway. Uh, so right now it is $38.99. Um, I think they have a promo going on. So, yeah. Um, other leveling. ERA. Do I have ERA? Pretty sure I do. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought they have a, like a one-knob voice reduction. So this one is just like a one-knob leveler. So you see down here the yellow um, is where it's boosting it. So you can go crazy with it. Or anyway, so yeah, one knob to kind of get it to add to your leveling. Um, interesting. So is it JP? Breast? Um, have you used voice level from ERA? Because it does have breath control, so I'm wondering how that would do. ERA is kind of annoying right now. They they hide. It's really difficult to like actually buy a single plugin. They want you to do like the subscription model, um, but it is possible to get. Do I have a link to that? I don't. Uh, if you look around, you should be able to find um, to where you can just buy a single plugin. But um, might be worth checking out if you're if this breath control uh, works well. Yeah, so this one's super simple. Um, just a one knob leveler. Um, now the free ones are both from Sonic Anomaly. So the first one is Tri Leveler. I haven't used this one too much uh, because I find it's just too harsh. So like if we do it real quick. Um, let me turn this off. So the loudness range is eight. And with the leveler, with try leveler two, it's 2.3. And I typically aim for between like three and five uh, uh, dynamic range. And so it just seems like it's way too, way too strong. And there may be a way to do this, like make it a little bit easier. I haven't figured it out. Um, Cause you can watch and see like this input trim will adjust. Maybe if I, what if I bring that down? Does that do anything? No, it's still pretty harsh. Um, yeah. So it just seems like it's just a little too strong for me. Um, I'll use this typically. So I have a show that is an interview show. I get separate tracks and I have somebody, I hire somebody to write show notes for it. Um, and so I'll run like a tri leveler on the raw audio just so it's a little more, so it's leveled and I can send it to her so she can write the show notes without having to write her volume knob. And then I'll, um, do my typical compress like a stage compression to get it right. I haven't, I use RXD breath sometimes, but there are some words that sometimes takes a breath. Yeah. That's what I found with like, um, I think waves has like a deep breath plugin that people, it's like you either love it or you hate it. I hate it because it either ignores like obvious breaths, but then it like actually takes out words. And so breath, like I just found like having my custom action to manually deal with breaths is like the best way to go. Um, let me let me see. I wonder if you can get like a free trial. You might be able to get a free trial of the Acusonus ERA leveler. If not, let me know and I can just like run some tests on it um, and see how breath control works. So to send me a message, let me know. Um, the other one is Vola 2 from Sonic Anomaly. Um, I don't know how to use this one. Um, oh, push down. So just kind of adjust this. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So this one looks like it's kind of a uh, high level, low level, like max volume. You can pull up and push down. Um, this is one that I've had. 
Wow. Um, so this is one that I've had for years, but just never actually used because I had other tools. So I'm going to be checking out this one a little bit more because this looks like tri-leveler, but I can actually adjust the strength of it. And it's free, and that's fantastic. Where is it? Render. Nice. Okay. Uh, so if you need a good free voice leveler, Bullet 2 could be a good option. Um, and Sonic Anomaly, there was some issues. Like, they stopped making plugins because they didn't like St what Steinberg did. So Steinberg, I think, owns, like, the VST thing. Um, and like VST three, um, is proprietary and like you have to pay in order to create plugins. I don't know. And they, they essentially just kind of like pull their stuff. So you can find repositories of, um, all their stuff. I have this link on the page. Um, okay. And now my button stopped working. Y'all, why can't shit just work? Okay, so there's a link to where you can find it. Um, and also some of their tools, like Sonic uh, Tri-Leveler 2, you can get through Repack. Um, but I don't think Vola 2 is there, so you have to get it from like that repository. Uh, but check out that link um, for a link to that. All right, so that is leveling. Uh, we did do reverb sibilance. Um, I don't know if it's me, if like my ears are just like more attuned or if like as I'm getting older, because I know my hearing is, isn't as good as it used to be. Um, and so I'm not sure if it's just like because of that, like I'm hearing sibilance more, but I'm like, I hear all the time and it just really bothers me. Um, so RX obviously is going to be the go-to. The Esser. Um, so this will adjust the threshold. So typically, um, Sibilance is going to live at 4,500 and 1,200. So I set mine to 4,500 and then adjust this as I need. So let me turn on the... Uh, Where is it? Okay, I don't know where it went. Um, let me find that audio file. And then we'll actually listen to how to use uh, RX's DS. Excuse me. Okay. So we'll just boost this so we can actually hear it. What you've experienced or Okay. So you should be able to hear that. Um RX nine DS right there. Yeah, so set this to 4,500 or 12, 20, like wherever you find the sibilance. Uh, and DSing is another one that can really mess up your audio. So you have to be really careful. So I'll put S only so you can hear um, what you're taking out and just adjust this threshold until you're hearing the sibilance, but not any actual speaking. So if I go too low, that you decide to do it's taking out um audio that i want to keep in so once you get it dialed in you can turn off output now how to cast because there's two things and then there's two things that come up sure it still sounds good um 
The other one is Sibilance, which is kind of my go-to in Reaper. It's a, it's a nice kind of like set it and forget it type one. Uh, I guess it's about as set and forget it as RX, so ignore that. Um, so I just do voiceover. And typically I'll adjust the threshold down and detection up a little bit. What's cool about... Podcast because there's two things. There's two This th one is you can see it, there's a nice visual of what you're doing. Because there's two things. There's... So let me turn off the volume so we can watch and not be distracted. So as you adjust the threshold, you can see... So this like lighter green color is like what the sibilance is. And you can adjust the threshold... Uh, to make sure to capture it and then detection makes it more sensitive to it and then monitoring it so you can hear what's being taken out and just make sure that you're not cutting out any actual speaking that you want to keep in um and sibilance is one of those things like I'll typically do it after like a vocal writer or, or some sort of leveling, um, either like in compression or whatnot, because as you like boost the quieter parts, that will introduce some sibilance. And like, as you can see here, um, you know, the threshold is only going to pick up at certain levels. So having, bringing up the quieter parts will make sure that you can actually like detect the sibilance. And then the other one I mistakenly demonstrated earlier is Lisp, which is a free one. Um, Podcast, because there's two things. There's two things. It's a uh, one knob. You can adjust the attack and release, but then just like your one knob to adjust how much it's being reduced. And you can actually listen to it and make sure you're not taking out too much. When I struggled with all of this. So super simple. And like I was saying, like, I don't know if I'm just much more if my hearing, like as I'm getting older, like sibilance is just becoming more prevalent or if I'm just more attuned to it, but like it really bothers me. Um, so any questions so far on sibilance? Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, of course, the mega plugin Chef Omni Channel again has the Esser, and you can do two and one strip, and then also you can insert more. Um, and you can like rearrange them. So if you wanted to adjust where they fall in the chain, so if you want to do compression before deessing, you can adjust it. Um, and you can insert. See, oh wow. I think I knew this, but forgot, but you can insert like other plugins into your chain. Interesting. Um, all right. You're not alone. It bothers. Have you tried JS? Yes, sir. I have not. But let's go ahead and kind of take a look at that. All right, what do we got? Some presets, so you can make your own and my own. All right, so if we do this. And by the way, these two things also came up over and over hmm. and over and over for me when I struggled with all of this for so, so long. Now I've been doing this work for years. I've coached, let me say that again, Daniel. So I'll probably need to actually like look into how to use it. Um, oh, monitor. And by the way, these two things okay. also came When I struggled with all of this for so, so long. Now, I've been doing this work for years. I've coached. Hmm. Now, I've been doing this work for years. Now, I've coached hundreds of women. Yeah, I think it's one I'm probably going to need to um, 
play well i'm probably not gonna play around with it more because i just don't need a, a deesser um but i might look into it to kind of see actually yeah i'll look into it at some point um because having like a built-in deesser if i can figure out how to use it would be pretty useful for a lot of people uh is chef's ds2 for siblings yeah yeah ds i'm assuming is for dsing but yeah so the way i would use it um and by the way these two is setting this one to 4500 and then setting this one um to 2500 and then you can adjust and the by the threshold. way these two things also over for me when i and struggled with like all of this for on. so so long so i don't know what now i've been doing what's that this work for exactly. years i've coached let me say like adjust it until now i've been doing this work for years now i've coached hundreds of it's a bit weird at first feels like you're talking out taking out too much you probably have to adjust the threshold down so it starts reducing in the bar at the bottom Let's take a look. Oh, down and by here. the way, these two things also came up over and over and over and over. So adjusting the gain like this. If we put this back at 4,500. Oh, the threshold. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So do you want to go down or up? Oh, I see. It's over on this side. I don't know why I'm looking over here. Is there a way to hear? Is that what the monitor is? Like you can hear what's coming out? I want to stop emotionally yeah. eating, but your brain keeps telling you that you can't, that it's not possible, that you, that you, let me say that again, Daniel. But your brain keeps telling you that you can't, that it's not possible. Okay, so it's kind of like the chef. So it's not exactly what's taking, what's coming out. So I'm not sure like what the monitor is for. So that's number one. Number two, the okay. second thing is not having time for yourself and your goals and what you're wanting paired along with feeling burned out from doing all the things, taking care of everyone else. Oh. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> So I'll probably play around with it a little more, but that could be a good option for, because I know there's a lot of people that want to like do everything in Reaper and not have to install third-party plugins, which makes sense. Um, so that could be a really good option. All right. So next, what do we got? We did equalization. We did compression, leveling, reverb, sibilance, noise reduction. We got limiter, metering, and miscellaneous. I did not... And put deep plosive, did I? Well, honestly, there's only one plugin that I would that I use for plosives, and that's RX's deep plosive. Um, now you can, I know, like if you put in a high pass, I think, and like cut off like the low frequencies, that's one way to deal with plosives. Um, but typically like I'll, yeah, I just use deep plosive from RX. Um, all right. So limiter, so Sheps has one. I found that I don't, I guess maybe it's not like a brick wall, uh, limiter. Um, but I found that like it wasn't, it's, it still peaked when I had that limiter on. Um, so the limiter I've used for the longest time is unlimited from Sonic Anomaly. So you set your threshold here, your output. Typically I'll drop this down to like minus 0.46 or 5.8, um, just to give me a little bit of headroom in case it peaks over Doom. a little bit. Now I decided to, um, yeah, so basically, so the way I've used limiters in the past is I'll do like all my leveling and then I'll use my compressor 
uh, to boost the output to achieve the minus 16 lefts. And then using the limiter, um, using the limiter to just make sure that it didn't peak. Um, but I've never really used it to as part of the loud. I know like I'll, it, it, limiters are going to boost the loudness a little bit. So you can adjust for that. Uh, but yeah, pretty simple. It's got a lot of uh, sliders over here that I don't touch. Uh, but what's cool about this, it does have Luff's meter. Um, so you can use that as well in order to kind of monitor your loudness. Uh, so this one's free. I'm pretty sure you can, yeah, this is, I'm pretty sure this can be installed through repack, um, through the Sonic Anomaly, uh, repository that's in repack. Um, and let me know, I'm assuming everybody has repack, knows how to use it, but if you want me to go over how to do it, let me know. Um, or you can download all the, uh, Sonic Anomaly plugins from archive.org. Unlimited. I've not, I haven't used these other ones, so try leveler. Um, a lot of really cool. Like they did really good work. It's kind of it's a, it's a shame that they're they're not around anymore. Um, I don't remember like what they started doing. If they did other things, but yeah. Um. So the other one that I've been really digging lately is the brand new Relimit that came out with, I want to say 6.38, maybe 37. Um, but it's just like with anything with Reaper, it's ugly as sin. Um, but it's amazing. I love that you can see what your waveform is. Um, and you can see, I love the visual aspect of it. So you can address your threshold to get your audio to the ceiling. And you can see this blue line up here um, is what it's actually like reducing. So you can see on these points, um, it went over the ceiling. And so relimiter kicked in, or relimit kicked in um, and took care of it. And then you can adjust your ceiling to give you a little more headroom if you wanted to. Uh, but this has been my go-to, and you can use this also in conjunction with compression. Free equals ugly and reaper. Yep. <laughs> but works like a dream, pretty much. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, the UI. So, I have a custom theme. But, like, if you go back to, like, past themes with reaper, like, it's just so ugly. Uh, very dated. But, um... Like, that's, I don't know, part of the charm. Um, what? Really, is not ugly. <laughs> okay, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But, like, if we take a look at, like, their, um, their loudness meter, like, there's just no, there's no thought. That's the thing. It's like, I, when I did coding years ago more, I saw this joke. It's like, you don't let developers create user interfaces because you end up with stuff like this to where like if you need to add a new feature they just throw they just find a blank space and throw it in there like this there's no you, like there's nothing pretty about this and like they added normalization on render so they just threw in a button here <laughs> like that's one thing like hindenburg looks really cool but reaper can do so much hey it has colors okay okay um I'm speaking to the wrong group here. These are not my people. Uh, but yeah, can you, I think here you can actually adjust. I feel like you can actually change the colors on it, but yeah, so not the prettiest thing, but it works amazing. Um, so Batman asks, what do, uh, Rima, do you like better than, what about Relimit do you like better than Unlimited? And it's the visual. Um, it's being able to see the waveform. So like I said, I don't have formal education. I don't like my, I'm not trained. Like I, my ears, I can't hear like if I use compression ratio four instead of two, you know, 
So I rely a lot on visuals and that's what I love being able to see the waveform and be able to see what I'm doing. And that's what I love about um, Nova GE is being able to see the EQ, the EQ curve. Um, yeah, yeah, Reaper, Reaper is a program designed completely by developers with no thought of UI or UX. I, I mean, it might lose its charm. You might like miss out on too much, but like, I think it'd be cool if they hired like a UX person and maybe have like a different like fork of Reaper that just looks better. Um, but like, you just can't, you kind of why I'm leaning away from chefs. I want to love it, but I can't seem think it's doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, like chefs is great. And I know like Brian Ensminger is somebody in my mastermind who loves it, but it's just like, it, it's, it, because it's all based on like actual physical hardware, um, you just have like the VU meter. So yeah, I love um, being able to see the waveform and like Unlimited does have that as well. Cause like you can see like where the meter is coming. If you drop this down, you can see You can see like how much reduction is happening, but it just not to not, it's not the same as this. So it may be ugly as shit, but it's, it's, an, I love it. It's kind of, it's become my go-to limiter. I like the visual stuff too, for sure. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing is like Reaper is so versatile and I, so it'd be really difficult to do because you'd have to like rearrange so much. And like, I know the community would be pissed off because it's so community driven. Like no other doll that I'm aware of. Do you have something like Repack? Are you able to completely recode Reaper? Like, do you guys know about Ultrashaw? Like, it's a complete, like, reskinning, like, reprogram, essentially, of Reaper dedicated to, like, podcast production. It's all in German, so I've never bothered. I tried to learn how to use it, but I just couldn't get past it. But um, I think a better UI may have an impact on speed and resources needed. That's very true, too. There's something to be said about, like, how uh, basic it is. Um, but, like, I'm not going to complain. Like, if they never, like, I love Reaper. Like I'm a sucker for good UI, but like the what Reaper has done for the price, what they do for community, and just the like seriously, uh, do you guys get on the Reaper forum? Like the community around Reaper is amazing, um, and like if you need something done, like there's scripts out there, and like you could probably find somebody. Who, like I was in one, and somebody's like, I need this specific thing, and somebody's like, Well, here's a little bit of code that'll do that. It's like amazing. All right. There's that tangent. Um, Chef's Omnichannel has a limiter. So the, okay. So second at last category is metering, which with the uh, release of Reaper 6.36 is obsolete, but let's talk about it. Um, my go-to limiter for year or meter for years was the Waze WLM. Um, short term. Okay. So yeah, short term, momentary, long term. Um, it's amazing. Does the job. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just going to rush through these. So you lean very similar. So, uh, WLM is paid for you lean is free. Well, they have a premium version as well. Um, but it, it does everything you need it to. But now, it may be ugly, but Reaper now has the built-in loudness meter. Um, so it does everything that you need it to. But honestly, uh, somebody left a comment earlier. Um, oh, Batman. Um, you had asked, like, is there any point to these meters now that Reaper has the dry render? And like, I, I have not used any of these meters since the update. Like I used, I used to use uh, WLM on every one, but like, I don't use it anymore because now we have all of our custom actions 
that does the same thing but does it faster so now instead of having to like play back the audio to get a big enough sample to see what the loudness is i can just run this loudness meter and get all the information i need um was there another one Oh yeah, and then Melda Productions also has an analyzer. So Yulene is one I use that's really great. Yeah. Um like I almost bought their premium version because it has like that standalone module or program. So you can throw your audio in there and it'll analyze it. But like I can do that now with Reaper. Excuse me. I can now do that in Reaper. So JP, like do you still use Reaper? Or sorry, do you still use Ulean or are you switching over to doing like the dry run um, and using the new actions in Reaper? And does anybody still use metering or is like, are you like me and switch to um, the dry running? And does anybody uh, not know like what all this means? So I did do a video on all the loudness tools. So I don't want to like, if everybody is aware of it, Actually, you know what? Anybody watching the replay, um, I should have mentioned earlier that this is going to be timestamps. Anyway, I'll put a thing. Anyway, um, I bought it, but it's basically the same. I'm still using Le Uline. I'm used to it. Yeah, that's a lot. Of, like, once you get used to a plugin, like, that's why I still use 2500. Like, there's no reason. I, I know how to use it. It's what I'm used to. I'm confused about the custom loudness tools. Okay, perfect. Um, so these are the ones that I use. I think there might be one or two more. Um, so, okay. So time selection via master. So I have this section um, highlighted, the time selection. And so when I run this, it'll analyze this section of audio um, it'll analyze the loudness. Does it always render through the master? No, it does not. Um, wait, or does it? I'll look. So here, obviously, I have the the volume boosted quite a bit just so you can actually see the waveform. You can hear the sibilance. Um, so the highest point, it peaks at plus 4.4 and is clipped over a thousand times. I don't really use IRMS. It's just like a loudness metric. LRA is the loudness range. So it's the difference between the quietest part and the loudness part. Um, and then LUFS integrated is the average LUFS of this entire section, um, which is minus 14.6. And typically I'll aim for minus 16, which I think is the Apple standard. Uh, YouTube, I think, is minus 14. Spotify might be minus 14. I can't remember, but I aim typically I'll aim for like minus 15.6 because um, different platforms have different standards and just try to keep uh, close to all the standards. Like I think I got that tip from Chris Curran who does like minus 15.6 ish in order to kind of get close to all the different platforms. So this one is via master. Um, selected tracks within time selection. I, I'll check that one. Master mix obviously is going to be the entire thing. So these two, so selected tracks with effects won't run it through master, um, but it will run it through whatever effects you have on the track itself. Spotify is minus 14. Okay. Um, and then the selected items is the same thing. Whatever item you have selected through whatever effects you have on the track, but not through the master. Um, but let me check that other one to see what it is. So it's called selected tracks within time selection. For some reason, like my actions menu has been like super slow. Calculate loudness of selected tracks within time selection via dry run render so that won't go through the master. Or will it? Does dry run render? Yeah, okay. So maybe anybody in chat, do you know if um the dry run render always goes through the master. 
I don't think so. Well, that's actually... Is there like a game plugin? Let's see. Let's, uh... I'll put an EQ on the master with a gain of negative infinity, so it's completely silent. So, via master, okay, obviously that's going to be silent. Select a track within time selection. Oh, I have to select a track. See, this is why I'm confused. <laughs> well, that's why that's why I love this discussion, so we can figure it out. Okay, so select a track within time selection does not go through the master. That's, it will be the effects on the track. Um, master mix is going to be through the master, obviously. Selected items. So I have to select an item. That one does not go through the master. Okay, so not all of them go through the master. All right, so Spotify. So if I want to check how the compressor is affecting LO, LRA, how should I do that? Yeah. Through, okay, so let me drop this down to a reasonable, but I'll still normalize it. Okay. Um, so the way I do it is I find a good chunk of dynamic audio. So that has a lot of low, a lot of high. So I select this section and run the time selection via master. So you can see my LRA is 8.6. So if I go ahead and throw on a compressor, I'm not going to actually like do this properly. I'm just going to put like on a super compressed um, and boost that. And then if I run that again, so before it was a what, 8.8? .8. And now 6.2. So that's how you check your, L your loudness range. Does that make sense, Batman? I am Batman. All right. So let me know if that makes sense. And now we can go on to like some of the more fun ones. So this is just miscellaneous. Um, what if two tracks though? I only want to see one. Okay, yeah. So let me... I'm going to bring up an interview. So here we have two tracks. Um, so what I'll, I'll like take a section and then you can select these two tracks. And then the action of selected tracks within time selection. So it'll just be in this highlighted section. It only render this audio, but it'll separate it based on track. So you can see this first track has an LRA of 3.8. And this one has an LRA of 6.3, and that's the integrated loves. Um, another way of doing it is you can just like um, solo the track. And then if you do time selection via master, it'll only give you the one track. You'll see there'll be that bit of silence because that other track is uh, muted. And then what you can do, 
um, is if you put them in a folder, select all three tracks, and then select a track within time selection. You're welcome. The solo, yeah. <laughs> so now you can, so when you do put it in a folder, um, you now have the individual tracks, but then you can also see what they what they look like together. And now keep in mind, so um, it it still trips me up. The dry run rendering will de detect if it's mono or stereo and reflect that. So since um, if you see like minus twenty, minus twenty one, minus twenty, um, mono. Uh, with a lot, so on a mono track, a Luff's reading of minus 19 is the same as minus 16 on stereo. So because I'm doing single tracks, it's doing it as mono. It's reflecting the mono level. But then if I do the master track, because my settings is stereo, um, it's going to reflect the stereo Luff's level. So that's why. So it's got to keep in mind, if you see... A stereo track up here, um, you're aiming for minus 16 here. If it's just that single one, then you'll want to aim for minus 19. I have so many times I have been trying to get to minus 16 and didn't, and I missed that it was a mono. So then it was like a stereo of like minus 13 or minus 14. So it was like way too loud. I also use the SWSBR Analyze loudness to compare several tracks. You get like a spreadsheet. Yeah. I can't wait to watch this again. Um, so, yeah. I plan, I don't know when, as with anything, um, I plan on doing a loudness video of like my process of getting to um, like the final, I guess the mastering, but the finest loud, uh, final loudness range and all like the level and all that. So the analyze loudness tool, um, are you talking about this one or is there another one? Because this one, yeah, will analyze individual items. Is there one uh, that does tracks? And Batman, if you have a show that you want me to work on, like I was, I don't, I think you're here, but if you have like a, I can do a live like uh, edit with me. And if you want to send me like a show you do that's under 30 minutes. Um, okay. That's the one. Can, I don't, does it do track? Oh, okay. So my problem with that one is it doesn't do um, effects. So it doesn't take into account if you have compressors or anything on there, which is why I like the built-in loudness tools because it'll do um so if you do pre-editing then you can definitely check it out um that's why i like the built-in loudness tools because it will take the effects you have into um into account so then you can see what your compression and all that is doing to the loudness and the loudness range all righty so Trying to think. Okay. Um, any questions about anything I've covered so far? Um, or are we excited to go on to some other ones? I, okay, so now my stream deck broke. Or at least this one button. Does this work? No, none of these work. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, well, uh, I'll ask the podcast host. That would be awesome. Yeah. And um, so as stream elements keeps popping in, I do live Q&A sessions. So if you want to like hop on a live stream together, um, I can like answer questions. We can do like a one-on-one -on -one session in the Facebook group. That would require you to be in the Facebook group, but that's something we can definitely do. Well, I guess you don't have to be in the Facebook group. I'll stream to the Facebook group. You just have to show up. Alrighty, so a really fun plugin 
So let me turn on the volume. It allows a lot of other uh, folks out there. It's probably... And there's a little weight fluctuation. And because my last surgery didn't... Um, so fresh air from digital shit, digital shade, digital, a slate digital. It's free. You just have to sign up for like their newsletter and you can get it for free. Um, but you can add like high mid presence or like high end to really kind of. I want to share with you guys that I'm really scared. If you've been listening to these episodes, you'll know that I have been working on my weight loss in order to prepare for a really big surgery that honestly scares the shit out of me. I am scared of the surgery itself. I'm scared of the really shine. I want to share with you guys that I'm really scared. If you've Um, been listening to these episodes. I really like it. Uh, The other one. Okay, so this one. Do I not have it installed? Hmm. Well, I don't have it installed, but it is a EQ curve analyzer. So you can see kind of like the EQ curve of your audio, which can be really useful if you're trying to like find something. Um, forget to install that one. So Melda Productions has a notepad. It's not super cool, but if you're doing like um, fiction podcast or um, like a narrative, whatever, it, it, it's cool that you can like, keep notes within reaper and if you're working with other people it's a great way to share notes back and forth um another youtuber is actually coding fresh air looks cool so after some eq if you yeah so i find that like if um a speaker is like too muddy there's like a little too much low end it's not like you can't it's not as crisp or as, i'm using like these really obnoxious like audio engineering terms but like there's how else do you describe it but um, like if, if you hear it, it makes sense. Um, I have like one client that she has like a lower voice. She has an amazing voice. I don't have her permission to use her audio, so I can't show it maybe next time. Um, but the, she has like a lot more on the low end. So it, it's harder to, there's a lot of body to the voice, but it's not um, as clear. So I can use fresh air to really kind of boost that higher end and make it a lot more clear. Um, Works really well with music. Yeah, I'm sure it's like designed for music as well. But um, yeah, really good. And the fact that it's free is amazing. Uh, Notepad is really cool. Um, Leonardo Facchinetti, I think is how you pronounce his name. He's another YouTuber who does Reaper, but he he live streams like a lot of coding. He's working on a note taking plugin or something in Reaper. I'm really excited to see what he comes up with. Um, Because I think that'd be really good for people that do narrative shows or um, more complex shows than like an interview or like uh, like a solo show. Um, The last one that I'm going to cover today, unless you guys want to talk about another one, so please let me know, is... called auto mixer and leonardo facchinetti um leonardo leandro i'll put a link in the chat let me do that right now so he's really cool um, but he developed this auto mixer. So let me open this project. That sounds cool. I use item notes, but that's only for items. I don't. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, 
so there's a link to his channel. Um, sorry, I'm getting like Slack notifications from a client. So um, there's a channel. Be sure to give him a subscribe to his channel. Um, Cause he's doing really cool stuff, but he's developing like a note taking thing. I don't know exactly what it is, but um, I can't wait for it to show up or for him to get done. So auto mixer um, is really cool. So what it does is, so this is a show with three people that was recorded in the same room. So naturally you're going to have some bleeding. So what it does is it will detect the loud, the loudest track. And um, let me. All right. It'll detect the loudest track and drop the level of the other tracks. So when there's cross bleed, it'll make the the speaker more prominent. Um, novice was coming from now i get it that's awesome so curated music um... so you create a folder track um with all the tracks below it and so this one like the auto trim split like if i didn't do that so let's kind of show here um you can see this track is being picked up by this mic you know two or three different regions that are you know in the South Dakota, mixer, you know, chicago bears up, up northwest so they they could even though they're one chain or one customer or host they can they can regionalize those ads as well like it can get down to the all right it's it's indish it's okay do i now have some setup all right well i apologize um i thought i had this You know what? I'll do more information on it or like look it up because it doesn't seem to be working. You know, the, the, the host uh, company could be As regional, expected. right? It's, it's Indish, it's Illinois, Chicago, it's Ohio. You could have, you know, two or three different regions that are, you know, Indy's obviously Colts, you know, Chicago Bears up, up Northwest. So they, they could, even though they're one. Anyway, I'll figure that out and I'll come back to it. But basically, the idea behind it is I'd be worried that Auto Mixer would not record sections, whereas I could just auto trim split when editing. I'm too scared to try it. That's what I do. So obviously, like, I don't leave a bunch of silence. But it's nice for because sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. Because if, like, like right here, it's white my pork. <laughs> <laughs> not that real time and not that. Um, you're going to have some. So it'd be kind of nice to give prevalence to one track over another. Um, but yeah. So I'll look more into that and I'll probably make a video on it. Or actually, let me. I'll drop a link. To the channel, where is it? Okay, so there's a link to the video where he talks about and demonstrates it. Um, so check that out. So if you're interested in it, uh, there you go. And yeah, like I typically will do um, the auto trim split as well. Um, so that's it. That's all the plugins I had on my list. So if you guys have anything you want to talk about, let me know. Um, otherwise, that is it for this. Um, yeah, truncating silence. What else? There was like another video I really wanted to do. Um, well, there's so many videos I want to do. So yeah, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, so why change the gold background? Uh, to do something a little bit different. Um, so then I can do like this crazy fantasy theme. And also, um, 
when I go to this one, I have like less of like the background blocking Reaper. Um, but yeah, so cause I've been thinking about doing like this fantasy theme for the channel and like getting a new logo or just doing something different to have like a because right now there's not really um, a consistent theme. It's just like I have like the like the like uh, my font and like that kind of like brushstroke look. Um, but other than that, there's not really like a theme or anything, but just kind of has some like branding, I guess. Wow, there's like a huge chat on my face from this light. Um, been great. Thanks. Thanks for coming in, everybody. Um, uh, but yeah, so just kind of have like a theme and just kind of have fun and just like some more branding. Cause I was thinking like getting like a beer stein, um, kind of like a medieval type beer stein and like cool logo and like having like a lower third. My wife suggested having like, um, a cup like this, like slide across the screen to reveal like the lower third. I think that could be fun. Um, yeah, because right now there's not really... Because the gold glitter doesn't really go with, like, the current look of the channel. But, like, I don't really have a, many options other than that. Except to go with the green screen. And plus, like, my wife, she streams on Twitch. Um, and so we just had the green screen. So I thought, screw it. I still have the gold. I don't know if it'll show up the green screen. It's still back here. Um, yeah, it's just something fun. But... That's all I got for you. Yeah, yeah, so Truncating Silence is going to be the next video I record and release. Maybe I'll record that today. Your channel is awesome. Such a good niche. Yes. It's been a good send, godsend for me as I start working on a podcast from scratch. Yeah. And that, okay. And that's been like the whole reason for this channel and for the Reaper community, for podcasting thing, is because. Reaper is, except for Audacity, the most affordable DAW out there. Um, wow, that now now that I see it, that shadow is like really annoying me. Um, it's the most affordable DAW, the most customizable one. Um, any way to tip you? I not right now. Um, so the only real way to. Uh, the only real way to support the channel right now is I do offer coaching. So $100 an hour, um, and we'll get like a one-on-one -on -one call, and I'll help you with whatever you want to learn with Reaper. Other than that, I know like with YouTube, in order to have like their monetization, you have to hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you want to share this with other podcast editors um, and other podcasters that you know, um, that'd be a great way to kind of help grow the community. Uh, there is, so I, I use stream elements and there is a way like within that, I just don't have it set up. So if you guys, if that's something you want to do, I can set that up. But, um, as of right now, not really. Um, but yeah, so the whole point of this channel was because like Reaper is such a great tool, such a great DAW for podcast editing. Once you figure it out, the learning curve is huge. Um, and so, and like all the information out there, I mean, there's some, channels like videos out there for podcasting but like when you think of the big ones the reaper blog reaper mania um i feel like there was a third one but they're all geared toward and pretty much like everything around reaper is geared towards music production because that is the idea behind it and so it's great for podcast editing but you just need that little bit of help to like figure out how to set it up for editing how to do all the things and that's kind of why i did all this to help um, a lot of people know that Reaper exists for podcast editing and just kind of help them get started. Uh, the tavern looks like a place where you get your editing quests, just like in a fantasy RPGs. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite games is Skyrim. Um, uh, recently got into like the Witcher three. And so I just feel like it's a really cool background and kind of like my interests. <clears throat> um, I don't know. This has been fun. So if you guys have anything else to talk about, drop in the chat. Otherwise, we can end it there. And if you have any ideas, so Batman, you are new to Reaper. So are is there any topics that you're running into as a new user that you're struggling with? Because I've been using Reaper for five years now, maybe six, six. Um, and so I forget, like I take it for my knowledge for granted. Um and I forget what it's like to be new to Reaper and everything's kind of second nature at this point. So 
I would love your insight into what you're struggling with, um, with getting started with Reaper. So either drop it in chat or send me a message. Um, trying to think of where. So, because you're not on Facebook, is that right? I think you, that's what you said. Um, so if you are on Facebook, feel free to send me a message there. Otherwise, you can send me a message on my website. Um, okay, perfect. Uh, totally agree with the mission of getting more people using Reaper. Hey, if you're ever interested in Spanish subtitles or dubbing to grow your audience, let me know. Oh, that would be awesome. Like, I'm not going to say no. I have somebody who writes, well, I'm trying to get um, English captions for all my videos. But if you're down to um, caption for Spanish, I'm totally down for that. Any way to make this more accessible, you know? Uh, I asked a lot of questions on the Facebook group and Reddit and here. And yeah, I'm living this right now. I'll send a message maybe. Perfect. And, and no pressure. Like, don't feel obligated to do it. Um, but like, yeah, I'm always, I'd love the insight of people who are just starting out. So that way I can help tailor my content to also make sure that I focus on people that are new and don't get caught up in like where I'm at and where like, you know, a little more advanced stuff. I want to make sure that I stick to um, helping new users is RX standard enough to complement Reaper or should I aim for advanced? I have standard. I start out with elements for a very long time and then I bit a bullet and upgraded to standard and I haven't upgraded to advanced. I don't know. Let's take a look. So I guess I can say, um, that standard is perfectly good for me. Um, but let's see what advanced has. I know some people have it. Um, all right. So dialogue isolate D hum. All right. So I think like it has like a dialogue denoise or something. Um, so I think it has more tools for dialogue, which obviously would be good for, um, podcast editing but i i've never felt that rx standard wasn't enough can we see the modules okay so oh ambience match that could be cool um that'd be good for like if you're recording out in the wild or something um Center extract, do you bleed? I have the standard license, no complaints. Yeah, same. Um, I don't have center extract, so I'm not sure exactly what that would do. It, I don't think that's necessary for podcasting because you want to make sure things standard anyway, or centered, or at least for the most part. D wind, I think, could be good if you're out in the wild, or maybe like, um, so I noticed of some plosives, like, D plosive will take out the plosive, but like that wind noise is still there. So maybe D wind could be good. Um, I'm trying to let go of using Adobe Audition for the auto heal function and spectral editing. That's why I want to know if RX can complement slash replace that for Reaper. So definitely spectral editing. Um, I don't know about auto heal. I don't know exactly what that does. But um, RX, you know, definitely has a spectral view. It has spectral repair, spectral denoise. So I'm sure it can do all that. And Reaper does have spectral view. Um, It's not nearly like what you get from like an RX. But you can kind of see what the 
where the frequencies are. You can see the spectrogram. So Reaper does have this to an extent. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what all like the auto heal function does. Um, but if it, so like the NS1 plugin. Oh, also, uh, welcome in. I don't think I saw you earlier, but the um, the NS1 is kind of like a uh, general cleanup kind of denoiser. Um, the video I watched on it said like it can take out like sibilance to an extent, a little bit of de, uh, a little bit of reverb. Um, so it's it's kind of like a an all encompassing kind of general cleaner. I actually have a question. I use sometimes use RX as an editor, open an item in RX for editing, and sometimes after editing it, it doesn't update. I have to rebuild peaks. Does that happen to you? Yeah. Um, yeah, that kind of thing can happen. So I'm assuming you there is a setting. I'm sure you have it. Uh, where is it? Under media. Set media items offline when an application is not active. So make sure I have that set on. Um, but yeah, it happens sometimes. So that's why um, I have a quick rebuild peaks. So I can easily just do that real quick. I don't know if there's a fix for it. It's not, it's, it hasn't been like a big enough deal for me to worry about it other than, uh, having you like, know, basically, whoops. Um, other than having it on my radial menu to rebuild peaks. And then sometimes like it doesn't set media offline whenever I go somewhere else. Cause sometimes it'll still be online. So that's why I have quickly set media offline and set media online right here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know there was somebody in the Facebook group that said that they use Adobe Audition for a lot in conjunction with Reaper. I think there was an option about it, but I don't remember. To rebuild peaks, or what do you mean? Um, so, is she, uh, does that answer your question? Um, yeah, so I just let me know, like, what kind of, what, I guess you're, I know how Google works. Spot healing brush to remove clicks, pops, and other short noises if you want to remove from your audio. Okay. Adobe Audition has powerful noise reduction tools. If you are um, adapted noise, as long as you have background noise before people start speaking. I mean, the, I'm almost sure that I didn't have to rebuild peaks at some point, but I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> yeah, most of the time I don't have a problem with it, but occasionally it seems like Reaper kind of gets um, hung up. And just like with... Uh, um, like not setting media offline. Sometimes it happens. It's like an auto brush and makeup tool for occasional noise events by selecting the item either in waveform or spectral view. So RX has this instant process. And... this oh yeah so you can turn on instant process and like if you see like let's just say like this is bad you can kind of clean that up so i don't know if that's kind of what rx does, or uh the auto heal does but rx does have that i don't know if it's in elements but it's definitely in standard <clears throat> so let me know if that answers your question or if you're unfortunately stuck to Adobe Audition. Sometimes I hear a click in my recording. 
kind of like a loud keystroke. Any ideas what that is? It's okay if not. Okay, so is it in the recording or is it just something you hear when you're listening in Reaper? And like if you go back, it's gone. Um, because if it is something in the recording, then I mean it's probably something that happened in the real world. Um, RX, you can go in and like using like this attenuate, um, or I guess maybe declick. Did you guys hear that? Weird popping. You mentioned clicking and now I got crazy noises yeah, going like on behind me. Um, so you can probably do that in RX. Um, but if it is in just in the playback, but not like actually in the recording. So like if you're listening along and you hear clicking and like when you go back, it's gone. Listening to the record listening to the raw recording through Reaper, but I don't see it in the waveform. So it's every time. So it's consistent. Like if you listen to that same bit of audio, it's there every time. Or is it just like occasionally hear some like clicking? Because if it is occasionally, it's not in the waveform. It's not actually in the recording. Um, that's going to be a buffer issue or like your uh, driver. So you can increase the same. Yes. Batman. I give you two options. <laughs> so it's while you're listening, but it's is consistent. Um, so like you hear it every time you go through. If so, then it could just be a click that um, that I don't know. It's definitely on the track. Okay. Um, then I would say, do you have RX? So while I'm on this topic, sometimes like I'll hear clicking that's not in the recording. It's just like a playback issue. Um, in which case you can increase the sample rate or change your driver. Um, so I use like direct sound is crap. I get it all the time. Wave out is good. Oz Azio, Azio, whatever, ASIO. Um, it's kind of like the standard. Everybody tell you switch to that, but it doesn't work in Chrome. So like I can't watch a YouTube video unless I switch this back. So it's just inconvenient. So I find wave out works best for me. Um, no RX. Okay. Uh, then I'm not sure. I would say post in the Facebook group and see if somebody, um, cause I'm crippled by the tools I have. So I can just throw an RX, um, and take care of it there. Let me see if. RX8 elements. So it's 30 bucks. D click. Okay. So I might suggest getting RX elements for $29. Um, I don't know if that's a limited time sale, but um, it does have a D click. So that could take care of it. Sure thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, RX is amazing. And then once you get elements, then you can upgrade to standard. I think what she said um, is $149. Because I think standard RX is like 400 bucks. I know you said you mentioned like free is probably the most you can afford, but I would seriously consider like spending the $30. Um, So it's $300. Yeah. I would seriously consider spending the 29 bucks in order to get this. Issue, does RX, you said you have elements or you just don't have RX at all? Because I'm wondering in elements, it doesn't look like it has that instant process. But. <clears throat> all righty. Um, well, that's all I got for everybody. Unless we have another topic to discuss. Um, 
or if you have ideas for other live streams um do let me know because like the plugin this plugin one is it's been on my mind for ages um and i started to record the video but it's such a involved video so much work that like a live stream just made more sense um is waves ns1 a better noise reduction tool than rx voice so i haven't done like a side-by-side -side comparison um so i always start an rx and i do a voice denoise every time um but i think ns1 does a little bit more so it so um ns1 is kind of like a set it and forget it Um, and it can do, I think it's a little more broad, so I can do like a little bit of sibilance, a little bit of D reverb, that kind of thing. Um, but my guess, so I can't, so I don't know. Um, but, uh, I would say they both serve a purpose. Um, uh, so my assumption would be like D noise is probably better at getting background noise. But NS1, I think, does a little bit more. If that makes sense, I don't know. Um, so I would say, like, between the two, RX is going to be your best bet because RX comes with so much more. Um, but if you have some spare money to throw around and you'd like something, because I got... So NS1 came with, like, a content creator bundle. So I got NS1... Um, this GW voice centric, um, which is kind of like fresh air. It's just kind of like a general, like voice enhancing thing. There's like a lot of cool things. I don't ever use it. Um, playlist writer and WLM. So this is really the only one I use anymore. Um, but between the two, like if I had to pick one, I would say RX, um, RX elements here. That's why I got, okay. That's why I thought. So does RX Elements not have like this instant process? Um, what's the main reason to get RX Elements in your opinion? So the voice denoise is much better than like Refear in Reaper. It's such a great denoising tool. Um, Declipping is amazing, amazing. So obviously you want to avoid clipping where at, at all possible, but um, it's going to happen and D clip does an amazing job at fixing that, which I don't know of any free tool that does that. And then D clicking, um, just like in your case scenario, I think would be very useful. I use a combination of RX voice denoise and Akisonus ERA denoise. Do you find like one's better than the other? Because our ERA is like a one knob thing, right? So you just like just say like, "Hey, do the like just kind of adjust like how strong it is, right?" Because if that's the case, then ERA and NS one I think are interchangeable. They do the same thing. In which case, like I probably, if I were you, wouldn't pay for NS one unless you just have money to throw around. Um, Elmas Boy, yeah, the denoise is amazing. Um, but if you have money to throw around, then by all means, it's a fun one to add to your arsenal. Yeah, it's thirty nine dollars right now. What does DClick refer to? So. Not necessarily mouth noises, so I think it does pick up mouth noises a little bit. It can be used for that. Um, but just like when you think of like a pen clicking type clicks, um, I think that's what it kind of refers to. Now, I will say this mouth click is amazing. Um, it does such a good job because like right now I'm really thirsty. And so you probably hear a lot of mouth noises. Um, and this is such a great job at fixing that. But yeah, but declicking, um, 
Well, let's look it up. The D-Click plugin and module automatically identifies and removes clicks, pops, and digital impulse noises that can ruin a listening experience. Quality degradation, digital errors, cell phone interference. So anything, what you think of with a click, um, it can take care of. I use ERA denoise to eliminate room slash noise that voice denoise didn't get. I do the same thing with NS1. So I'll do like an RX. Um, either if I don't have like a good uh, like bit of silence I can capture, I'll use adaptive mode. And I'll just do like a, a 5 dB reduction, which doesn't get everything. Um, but then I'll do NS1 as like a... Uh, just kind of like a general adaptive type voice or a noise suppressor. <clears throat> um, mouthy click is amazing for voices. Oh my god! So the worst part about you doing mouthy click, and so the way you do it, like sat down, like I didn't have a PowerPoint, but I was prepared, like on that level. <laughs> to is just, like, I turn on output and clicks only and then preview it. And then listen to it. So like for a little bit, you're listening to just that mouth noises because you definitely don't want to go too hard because then it'll start taking out the actual voice. Um, but yeah, mouth de click is fantastic. Alrighty, I think I'm going to call it here. This has been so much fun. Uh, like I said, if you have ideas about other like topics you think would be good for a live stream, um, send me a message, leave a comment somewhere. I don't care. Um, cause this has been a lot of fun to have like this discussion and talk about these things. Um, cause I have a, an editor that I hired to kind of outsource some of my work and like we're in Slack and we just kind of like chit chat about, different things like we're talking about that limit plugin um a whole bunch of stuff so it, it's fun to kind of like just kind of come over here and talk shop i need to like reposition this mic because this shadow is obnoxious or maybe i can reposition that light to be more on this side i don't know um yeah but thanks so much everybody for coming in hanging out chatting go live your life thanks so much yeah so well i'll say a self promo if um you are a professional podcast editor, meaning that you edit for other people. Um, check out the podcast editors mastermind. Um, it's a group page um, geared towards professional podcast editors. So if you do have people paying you, we will be streaming tonight. If I can get this link. You know what? There's a link. Um, we'll be going live in about three and a half hours. It'll be 10.05 Eastern tonight. Um, actually, I don't know if I'll, I'll be there. I don't know if I'm going to be on the stream. Um, I actually think my wife is going to be on it. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about marketing. So if you're interested in that, uh, be sure to tune in. And yeah, I'll see you next time. I'm going to stop this awkward, always ending ending videos and like this stuff is so awkward so hey thanks everybody for being here i'll see you next time